Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm going to let you know what's going on over the next few weeks, and that will be the focus of this particular vlog. So I'm not going to be at home pretty much every weekend because I'm going to various places that may or may not be beneficial to you. Some of these I can't tell you about, a couple of them I can. I'll be flying out to San Diego today to go and see Sony Online Entertainment. Specifically, I'll be looking at Planet Side 2. I'm looking to cover that game in great detail because it is the sequel to the MMO that grabbed me the most. And by grab me the most, I mean more than WoW. I think, honestly, I had more accrued playtime in Planetside than I did in World of Warcraft because I kept quitting WoW. And there were long periods of time where I just didn't want to play because there wasn't any kind of interesting content. One way or the other, it was definitely the MMO that left the biggest impact on me because it was completely different to everything else. I think that Planetside represented what MMO should be, this whole idea of persistent interaction with a large number of people. And I had some amazing times in that game. Some of the best times I've ever had in online gaming have come from Planetside. So the idea that Planetside 2 is coming out and that I'll be able to cover it in detail, that gets me really excited. Good God, it does. So I want to talk a lot about Planetside. I want to do a lot of footage for Planetside. So I'm heading over to SOE to see what we can get sorted out in that regard. Hopefully I'll come back with some really cool footage and interviews. We shall see how that one goes. So I'll be gone from Thursday through to Sunday evening. I do have a little bit of content prepared for you. Not a huge amount. There's a podcast. There's a couple of WTF is videos. And I believe there should be one mailbox as well. And I don't anticipate to be able to provide you any content while I'm over there. But at least you've got a little bit to tide you over until I come back. The weekend following that, I'll be doing the MLG Spring Arena number two in New York. MLG Spring Arena 2 is going to be an absolutely massive StarCraft tournament, $26,000 prize pool, 32-player event from the MLG officers in New York, and there are going to be some absolutely fantastic players. At the moment, they've got the following players announced, Dong Ray Gu, Hart, Ganzi, MC, and Thorzane, and there's a hell of a lot more qualification spots to be taken up. So it's going to be pretty damn awesome as far as I'm concerned. It's a premium quality event, it's a pay-per-view event in fact, and StarCraft fans know all about the way that MLG's been doing the whole pay-per-view thing. It's 20 bucks to cover the entire weekend, there are 11 streams. Because you know, you just can't get enough StarCraft, honestly. Yeah, there's a hell of a lot of streaming content from this event. They've got, of course, full HD broadcast, really great quality, 8 point of view streams, gameplay stream, interviews. There's a free stream, the Dr. Pepper Ultimate Access stream with all sorts of different features on. You'll also be able to watch the first match on Friday and Saturday for free. I don't doubt that a lot of you will be thinking, <laughs> pay-per-view for StarCraft? No way. And I don't really blame you, honestly. A lot of StarCraft content is free. But if you happen to think that $20 is not too much for an entire weekend of really high quality StarCraft, then you can head over to the MLG webpage, which is, of course, MajorLeagueGaming.com, and get yourself sorted out for that one. Should be a pretty cool event. Honestly, I'm very much looking forward to casting that. That will be with Apollo. Other casters include JP McDaniel, Rob Simpson from Blizzard, Wolf, and DJ Wheat. So that's the StarCraft I can currently talk about. People keep asking me about SCI 5. It is coming, hopefully in June. We're just looking for a time to properly do it because, of course, there's E3 to think about. I will be at E3, pretty much guaranteed at this point. I don't know what kind of coverage I'll be doing yet. I don't want to overpromise because, of course, I would love to just do the Gamescom style again. You know, get 50 videos out there, just get in there and do as much content as possible. But I don't know if it will be possible. This is my first E3. I'm not 100% sure as to how it actually operates. We do have some appointments and things like that, but I don't want to set a really high target and then disappoint everybody. So I don't want to talk about the coverage at this stage until I know for sure. And to be honest, I probably won't ever know for sure. Not until we actually get there in the first place. But I will try and bring you everything I possibly can from that event. All right, that's the majority of the travel and the events out of the way. I am traveling for something else. As I said, I'll be busy every weekend, but I can't talk about that at the moment. I'm just waiting for clearance to actually speak about it. It's pretty cool, and it's been a long time coming, but again, can't talk about it. All right, so what else is going on? Well, I'd like to congratulate everyone that got involved in the funding for our three Kickstarter games. All of them actually reached their goal, which is pretty damn incredible as far as I'm concerned. I think that's a nice start 
to the series. Clearly, things are going well, and hopefully I'll be able to bring you another Kickstarter within the next couple of weeks. We're looking to focus on games that don't have a really good start in funding. For instance, Necro and Starlight Inception, they had basically nothing going for them until we got involved in terms of the money that they'd raised. They had essentially nothing, and Kickstarter did help them out there. It managed to assist them in getting over the line, which is very, very important. I've got to say, I was a bit worried about Starlight Inception, but it is going to happen, so that's great news. Some people have also asked me to try and include Indiegogo, which is another similar service. I will see what I can do. I don't really want to go overkill on the Kickstarter thing because people do get this kind of crowdfunding fatigue, and I would prefer not to burn people out. And of course, people have got limited cash, so saying, hey, go fund these 10 games this month is fairly ridiculous when you think about it for a lot of people. But we shall see what I can do there next couple of weeks. I'll hopefully have Kickstarter 2 out there. And I've also taken your suggestions into account. I'm going to be altering the way that the content is presented. So I'm going to be showing you an awful lot more concept art and useful stuff as opposed to just having the static images and a little bit of video in there. So I shall up the ante on the production value for that particular series. Speaking of production value, you'll probably notice that the mic quality is significantly better than it was when I first moved here. We've done some soundproofing and dampening on the studio. It's not quite done yet. There are still a few things that I want to even out. You'll also notice, if you happen to be a bit of an audio whiz, that I'm running compression on this audio as well as a noise gate. The noise gate is currently a bit extreme, and honestly, the knowledge is beyond what I have at my disposal. I don't know how to fix it. So I'm going to be talking to my brother, who is actually a graduate in audio engineering. So he should be able to help me out a little bit there, and hopefully we can get that right. But thanks once again to the keen ears of those that pointed out, hey, is the attack or decay or whatever the ball's a little bit too vicious on your noise gate? Yeah, it probably is. We're working on that. Compression's not quite where I want it either. So hopefully we can get all of the settings nailed down. Now, as regards to video quality, that seems to have improved. The first 1080p videos I was putting out didn't look so great. I've increased the bitrate, and I've been twiddling around a little bit with the presets, and it's about at the level that I want it to be. It looks pretty nice. In terms of live streaming, looking to do a lot more of that at the moment. I'm really only streaming the Game Station podcast. Of course, there's no point in putting that in 1080p. Webcams are going to be webcams one way or the other, so it's a complete waste of time. But at the moment, what I've discovered is that XSplit really does not handle 1080p well, regardless of the machine. This machine is God's tier. Like, it's incredibly good, very, very powerful. It still can't handle 1080p streaming without dropping frames. I just feel that's an XSplit problem. XSplit itself warns you it's not designed to be streamed at that. But I'm looking into ways and means around that, looking for a capture card-based solution, talking to Ava Media a little bit, because they're the guys that made the game Broadcaster HD, which is what I use for my console streaming. They've got a new product coming on the market, which is looking really interesting. It looks like it's got some kind of hardware encoding on the card itself to take a lot of the grunt out of the encoding process. That's really nice. I'm looking forward to trying that out. Hopefully that'll resolve a lot of problems. At the moment, I'm umming and ahhing as to whether or not to just switch back to 720p live streaming until I've got that fixed, because honestly, the frame rate drops really not a nice thing to watch at all, and I would prefer to have a solid 30, maybe even 60 frames per second from that. Don't expect live stream content to make its way to the YouTube channel. I've said it before, I think the garbage day style stuff doesn't really need to be on the channel. I do like to do that stuff every now and again, I just don't want it to be on the YouTube channel. I've said this time and again, I don't want this to be a Let's Play channel. There's loads of Let's Play channels. I feel that the channel's a little bit different. I'd rather continue to provide you guys with the content that you actually come here to see, as opposed to part 37 of Random Console Game. So any streaming that I do will most likely just be for fun and will be left as a VOD on the Twitch channel, not on the YouTube channel. So don't expect a bunch of spammy footage. That's not going to happen. As far as I'm concerned, the Terraria LP or talk show, whichever you prefer to call it, is quite bad enough. We don't need any more of that crap. Aside from that, I think that about covers what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Once again, thank you very much for supporting the channel and what's going on. We are very close to getting quarter of a billion views, which is a nice little number far as I'm concerned. So thank you very much for helping us reach that. Also pretty close to 700,000 subscribers. Not that that really means a huge amount. But it's nice to see one way or the other, isn't it? We're getting about 600 to 1,000 subscribers every single day, so I'm pretty safe in saying that the channel's doing well. It's going where we want it to go, and I am happy with its current progress. I'm going to keep pushing it forward as best I can and see what comes of it. Thank you very much for watching this video, folks, and I will see you next time.